Welcome along guys. Well today I've been lucky enough to be invited to the UK launch of the new BMW R1250 RS. So we're heading out into the countryside, Box Hill, to Goodwood for lunch and then on to Brighton for some ice cream. <laughs> and it's all about testing out this new bike. Stick around. Now I've not ridden that many BMWs, I've obviously done a fair bit of work on the uh, new GS1250 which is very nice, I've also ridden the S1000 RR which I loved, so this is something a little bit different for me, this is all about sports sort of touring, I mean BMW call this a sports bike, so this is in the sports bike category, this is why I've worn my leathers today and not me, uh, not my textiles riding position on this is it's very nice actually very comfortable i've put all the suspension in dynamic mode to make it a bit more sporty feeling so i think we've got some nice roads from here between here and goodwood so it's going to be some twisty so we can see how this handles but to sit on it it's very very comfortable the seat is extremely comfortable the footrests are quite high it's quite a low bike I mean, it, it actually feels very low to the ground. I'm 6'2", 18 stone, so I'm a, I'm a big a big bloke. <laughs> I think even the, the more vertically challenged would be able to get on fine with this. I think they've obviously made it quite low, so you can cater for a nice wide audience. The handling seems quite smooth and nice. I mean, that, that Boxster engine's a, a big old lump, but it's very very low in the frame so even on the gs these things change direction very very quickly we'll see how we get on with this it's a fair old trek to do today i'd imagine we'll be doing about 150 200 miles today on this bike so stick around and we'll see what the comfort is like on a decent ride like this and also what the performance is like it's shaft drive of course a bit like the gs you know all, all of this all these engines that use this 1250 engine all the bikes which have this engine in they're all shaft drive which is brilliant from a maintenance perspective and it's great for a bike which you want to go touring on because you haven't got to worry about lubing your chain and all that adjusting your chain tension all that faff so shaft drive it may add a bit of weight and sometimes make a bit of a clunky on off ride but i cannot tell to ride this bike that is shaft drive it feels exactly the same as a chain drive bike to ride Perhaps even a little bit better because you've not got that whir of the chain going in the background, the noise of it. Incredibly smooth at the bottom. I think that's a standout feature for me so far. How tractable, especially coming off, just come off a big V-twin. That is impressive how smooth and tractable that engine is at any revs. Let's see how she handles. This is a good section of road, this. Yeah, it's lovely. The GS handles. So this certainly should handle at least as well, if not better, being a bit lower to the ground. Yeah, it gives you a lot of confidence. A lot of confidence to push it on in the corners, this. Motor crunch out of bends on the blipper. Lay it in. Yeah, it's lovely in the bends. Absolutely beautiful. Nice. Nice, isn't it? Very tractable, that engine, isn't it? So tractable from low down. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a good bit of punch, isn't it? Not quite as much as the GT, but it's still got a lot. The bottom end on it is really strong, isn't it? And from 2,000 revs, it just pulls cleanly, doesn't it? Whereas you've got to be about 3,000 on like the Super Duke and stuff, haven't you? Where you get a bit... Yeah, yeah it's, it's lovely, yeah. So I'm a massive fan of the shift cam engine. Basically how it works, I did a bit of research. On the inlet cam, you've basically got two profiles on the cam lobe one profile being for the lower bottom end range of the engine and then the other half of the cam low profile is for the higher rev range so basically what happens is at the lower rev range the uh, the shift the cam stays where it is you go above 6000 revs 
or whatever the limit is, I don't know. But that cam just moves across slightly onto the other half of the cam though. So that's why it's called shift cam, because that camshaft actually moves across the cylinder head slightly, so the two different halves of the low are profiled differently. So that, that's how it works, that's why it's called a shift cam. So what that almost gives you is two different engine characteristics in one engine. One optimised for bottom end, the other optimised for top end. Wind protection is also great at higher speeds, it's all 70 miles an hour. I've got that screen in the lower position because I've got a peaked helmet. I want that air sort of hitting, clean air hitting my peak. But it's a wide bike at the front, I'd imagine the weather protection would be pretty decent. The screen's nice and wide, the bike's wide at the front. So again, touring, perfect. Feedback with electronic suspension from the road is really good, especially in dynamic mode. You can feel the texture of the tarmac, you can feel any little bumps and lumps. You're not detached. Some of these electronic suspension systems leave you feeling a little bit detached from the road. This is definitely one of the better ones, especially in dynamic. I can feel everything, everything on the road. And you can feel what the tyre's doing on the road as well, which is more important. So yeah, that electronic suspension is great. You know, exactly the same as what's on the new Double R, and that impressed me. Same thing with the dynamic mode. That BMW electronic suspension, I think is, uh, it's, it's definitely one of the best, if not the best. <sighs> Time for some food. The main change for the new 1250 is the integration of BMW's shift cam. More torque and it's available uh, at an earlier RPM. The Sport comes in at uh, 13,465 and the Exclusive comes in at 13,960 pounds. Well, just stopped for a bit of lunch. We actually had the uh, the lead design lead for the bike over from Munich to talk about it. So that was really interesting having a chat with him. Well, uh, we have, um, uh... All the sort of behind the scenes stuff, the little elements which have been changed on the bike that you may not necessarily be aware of. Apparently, apart from obviously the engine change and all of the engine changes with the new 1250, there's also about 150 changes to the bike overall, excluding the engine. So it's heavily updated and even the where the engine sits in the frame is updated on this bike and obviously all of the the headlights and everything a lot of the plastics are new but a lot of the integration with the electronics and everything has all been subtly updated so it's, it's heavily changed for this year this bike so now we go on to brighton so we've got the run from goodwood to brighton quite an interesting thing which came out of it was about the shift cam somebody asked at what revs does the shift cam shift and it's not even rev dependent it's all it's a number of things it's de dependent on the throttle position the speed you're doing the revs you're doing so bmw's goal was to make it that you didn't know it was shifting so it's not a particular rev band that it changes on there's lots of variables that decide the engine decides when to shift that cam across and it's meant to be invisible so you can't notice it and you really can't Someone asked him if he could actually notice it and he says if the bike's got an exhaust on or the Acro on it, he can just about tell sometimes when the shift cam is shifting. But very interesting, it's a very sophisticated system. It's not just, you know, when you go past 5,000 revs it shifts. Another interesting fact is the, obviously the drivetrain and engine is the same across the range. So it's in the GS, it's in the it's in the R, you know, it's, it's in those three models, but in the GS, it's actually the final drive is actually more low geared because that bike is for going off road. It's actually lower geared than the RS and the other models. So that was another little interesting fact uh, gleaned from the lead designer. Can you adjust the screen when you're going along? Oh, I don't know, I don't want to break it. Everything is very solid feeling. I mean, there's no movement in that. That's a solid screen. Sometimes on some of the bikes things can be a bit rattly and the screen mechanisms seem a bit flimsy. Not on this. Very high quality. The whole bike has a, a really high quality feel. It feels premium. Even the ride feels premium. 
onward to Brighton. Where's the ice cream? Right, I'm going to turn you off until we get a bit closer to Brighton because this is just all filtering and traffic, which is doing very well, but it doesn't make for particularly interesting viewing. That was Brighton. Now we're off to another photo point and then back to Box Hill to wrap up the day. Lovely 99 I just had. It's a good job the suspension is uh, self-leveling <laughs> with the extra weight after that lunch and that ice cream. It's going to need to be. So what do I think of the little 1250 RS or the not so little 1250 RS? I think it's a great bike. I, I was just chatting to the BMW guy there and they said, you know, they don't sell many of these. I never sold many of the old version. They're not anticipating to, swe to sell that many of this version, which is a shame, I think. I think most people just default to the GS. But if you're not going to take the bike off-road, then this is a better road bike. So that's, 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 that's why I think I don't understand it, why people just default GS. This is basically a low, more sporty GS. <laughs> same engine, same, same drivetrain, some of the actual frame, I believe, is also the same. You know, if the bike's not going off-road, then, then don't, get a, don't get a GS. Get an RS. It offers the same wind protection, I would say. Obviously, the range is down a little bit. You know, the adventure, GS adventure, like that one. You've obviously you've got like a 25 litre tank or maybe more than that, it's a 30 litre tank. You know, you can do serious distances between fill-ups, but if you're on the road, you'll normally find a petrol station within sort of 200 miles, because this has got a pretty decent range in itself. This engine is pretty fugal. Frugal? Frugal. You know, it's just got 18 litres and we've been running this, I've been on this riding for about four hours and I've still got 132 mile range, so plenty of range even with a standard 18 litre tank the only advantage i can see with the gs over this apart from obviously the off-road ability is if you're a bit of a taller guy and you just want something a bit higher this is quite low you know your feet are up quite a bit so i mean i think for a, a shorter rider then this is absolutely fine it's much more manageable than a GS. It's 20, 25 kilos lighter than a GS, so it's going to be more manageable. And the fact that it's lower to the ground also makes it more manageable. But if you're taller, I can sort of see the appeal of the GS maybe, where you've got that bit of extra height. You can stand up while you're riding it and, you know, and stretch your legs without having to be in that crouch. So if you're a bit taller, yeah, I could perhaps get the GS part, but otherwise... I think the RS is where it's at. Well, that's it. Just heading back to Box Hill now. Been uh, all day on this bike, about five hours of riding. I'm absolutely shattered, to be honest. I feel really tired, but my ass is starting to go off. It's a little bit sore, but it's to be expected. The amount of time in the saddle, but everything else is perfectly comfortable. It would make a great tour of this, a great sports tourer. And that's, I think, what BMW are aiming it at. That low-down torque, that beautiful drivetrain. This bike is so refined now with this shift cam. It's just lovely to ride. So, fantastic bike. I've really enjoyed it. Massive thank you to BMW for the invitation to this launch. Ah, I'm looking forward to getting home. Nice hot bath. Burn my feet up. Catch you later, guys.